Finally, I'm back with part two of the Seket SK Tank build, the premium Core XY 3D printer that's built like a tank. Firstly, apologies for the gap since the first installment. Based on the comments, I know some of you have been waiting anxiously. In part one, I went through the specs, ordering, unboxing and assembly of the frame. If you're interested in that, please follow the link in the description. Since then, all I've done is visit the user mods page to download and print these feet in TPU with the aim of protecting my table. Let's commence this video by answering some viewer questions. A bunch of people wanted to know, why did I get on top of the printer? Well, this one's simple and it's about accountability. If the manufacturer claims that the frame is strong enough to sit on, I'm not going to let that pass. I'm going to test it myself to make sure they're telling the truth. Could I stand on top of some of my other printers? Probably. Am I going to? Not likely. How easy will the tank be to modify or customize compared to a 3D printer formed from V-slot aluminium extrusion? Many 3D printers, including the rat rig that I previously built, are based on V-slot extruded aluminium. The downside of this is the need for a lot of fiddly sub-assembly with all of the joining brackets needing bolts as well as T-nuts. However, once together, it's easy to design printed parts that can bolt anywhere onto the frame. The SK Tank instead uses prefab stainless steel frame components. The upside being that the frame goes together extremely quickly. It also means we don't need many printed parts, which should be good for rigidity. There are many pre-cut holes around the frame for mounting accessories or even enclosure panels, so I'm not too worried about that. As you've seen, there's also a range of community-made mods, so customization certainly is possible. So in my opinion, the main place the second falls down compared to the rat rig when it comes to customization is the rat rig's use of the Ever Carriage, which supports many different hot ends and extruder drives. In future, of course I can change the extruder drive and hot end on the tank if I like, I'll just likely have to do a bit of designing instead of having something readily available. Finally, a number of viewers wanted to know why I was using the Big Tree Tech Octopus mainboard. Reason one is I already have it and I've had plenty of requests to make a video on this board. Reason two is that it's overkill for most other 3D printers, but this machine will use six of the eight available stepper motor drivers and it also has some great other features I'm keen to try out, like being able to power the Raspberry Pi from it or select between 5, 12 or 24 volts for any fans, simply by moving a jumper, so no buck converters required. Time to continue the build with the aim of finishing the assembly in this video. We'll continue where we left off with the XY plane. When we left off last time, we had most of the XY plane in place, but it wasn't complete. So that's where we'll pick up in the instructions, and in my case, following the steps for the carbon fiber components. I followed the same pattern as before, laying out all of the hardware so I could easily see the labels, before setting aside everything listed for that step of the instructions, and then referencing the instructions diagrams and images to install the components on the machine. At the rear of the printer, the stepper motors are mounted with the tensioning system, with two bolts holding the arm that will be tightened once the belts are in place. Next I turned my attention to the carbon fibre carriage. Printed parts are used as spacers, as well as mounting the x-axis end stop on the back. The extruder will be added to this later on. This plate then bolts onto the linear bearing block, which means we're ready to add some belts. The instructions are really clear here, with full diagrams for both the left belt as well as the right on how to route it through the various pulleys and idlers. Even without this, the path of the belts would be pretty self-explanatory. Each pulley set has high and low pulleys, with the high pulleys for one belt and the low pulleys for another. It's just a matter of following the belt around the path and matching the smooth pulleys to the back of the belt and the toothed pulleys to the belt teeth. Once the end of the belts come back to the carriage, they tack underneath the carbon fiber piece, wrapping around on themselves where the teeth interlock and then are held together by this handy printed piece. A sufficient length of belt was included in the kit and I probably could have left a little more excess belt on the machine until everything was finalized. At this point, all of the belts were in place, but not tensioned yet, so I verified movement, which was fine, but there was one other glaring problem. The x-axis was a long way from square. Luckily, there's a page for a skewed x-axis, and I was able to follow it step by step to rectify my problem. So far, I had purposely left components like the y-axis linear rails loose, knowing that I would need to get everything square and tighten them properly later. This was the perfect time, so I temporarily removed some of the belts, 
got everything square using some printed spaces before talking up all the nuts and bolts, rerouting and attaching the belts, and adding the cable ties to hold everything in place. I could then use the inbuilt tensioning arm to pull outwards and tighten the belts, before also talking these bolts up to hold the tensioning system in place. Belts in place and x-axis now square. Getting the belts right for a Core XY 3D printer is absolutely crucial, which is why I elected to save it for this video where I could take my time and get it just right. That brings us on to finishing the bed. The rest of the Z axis is already in place, so now we concentrate on applying the heater. The plate for the bed is, well, built like a tank. It's 8mm thick and it's machined flat on one side. On the underside, I used isopropyl alcohol to clean off any greasy fingerprints and then planned the position for the mains powered silicon heater pad. I used my favourite cutting mat squeegee technique to apply pressure as I gradually peeled off the sticker from underneath. The instructions make it absolutely clear that you're trying to avoid air bubbles at all cost, so I took my time here in ensuring just that. The heater actually comes with a 150 degree thermal switch, but if you like you can add a 130 degree thermal fuse for added protection. Everything you need to do this is included in the kit, so it's kind of a no brainer. I twisted the legs of the fuse around the mounting bolts, before clamping everything together with nuts, bolts and washers and applying liberal amounts of captain tape to insulate the connection. I also used additional captain tape to hold the wires in place on the underside of the silicon heater pad. Time to flip the plate over and remove the protective film which is a job I'm honestly terrible at. Once the film is removed we can see the machine surface and once again I'm removing any fingerprints before applying the magnetic base that I opted for on my kit. It's yet to let me down, so once again I use my technique of pulling out the sticker bit by bit and then using the cutting mat to apply the adhesive and drive out any possible air bubbles, and this appears to have given me another good result. I then used a blade to trim the top of the magnetic sheet to match the machined cutouts on the bed that we're about to use to mount the feet. Like the rat rig, the SK tank has a kinematic bed, which means it's free to expand without warping when it heats up. The mounting surface steel balls are hard to get tight by hand, so I used some Loctite to make sure they wouldn't vibrate loose over time. I possibly used a little bit too much and had to tidy it up afterwards. With the three spherical feet in place, I could then put the bed in position on the matching Z-axis platforms. This red printed piece acts as an anchor, with the hole being large enough to let the spherical foot through to rest on the middle underneath. As it heats up, the bed is then free to expand in the X direction with the right hand mount, and free to expand in the Y direction with the rear mount. As you can see, this design can accommodate for and then self-correct an uneven bed. Since it came up repeatedly in the rat rig build, I'd like to remind you that three mounting points is enough for the bed because three points is all you need to define a plane, assuming the plane is flat and the bed here definitely is. Next up is the extruder, a clone Bontech BMG and the hot end, a clone E3D V6. These are the default, but when you're ordering, you can leave them out if you'd like to use other hardware. Everything is packaged in its own box, and potentially, you could run a Bowden tube instead of direct drive. But personally, I'm running with the standard direct drive configuration. We prepped the carriage by inserting some standoffs, as well as some washers and nuts, and then the pancake stepper for the extruder is sandwiched in between the two carbon plates, with the top plate then being retained by some washers and nuts. The extruder body is then mounted on the plate, and three of the M3 bolts go through to the stepper motor, and to complete this component, all we need to do is add the tensioning spring. We can now add the heater block and nozzle, in my case, for now at least, a 0.4mm nozzle with a Volcano heater block. The printed part cooling fan duct can then be prepped with the blower fan as well as the inductive probe, before all of this is secured to the front carbon fibre plate with more M3 nuts and bolts. To finish this video, I have commenced with some of the wiring. I followed the diagrams to place the power supply, the solid state relay for the bed, the fuse box, the stepper driver cooling duct, the Raspberry Pi I'll be using to run clipper, and the input for the mains power plug. Sadly, at this point I could go no further, and that's because I'm using a main board that the printer is not intended for, the mounting holes don't line up and it clashes with the duct, so my plan is to design an adapter with the cooling duct inbuilt. So that's where we'll leave it. I'll get that part designed and fitted before the next video, and then I'll briefly cover the wiring, before the main focus being the octopus board being set up for clipper. 
If you do like the look of this printer and you'd like to order one, just remember that businesses all around the world are currently experiencing supply chain issues, so please try and be patient as well as understanding. Head down to the comments to get your questions in for the next part. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printer building. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.